Mixin' Mega is a mostly uber-based other metagame available for play under the permanent other metagame ladder on Pokemon Showdown. Within the tier, any Pokemon can hold any unbanned Mega or form-changing stone, and gain the effects of the standard holder. An example of this in action can be seen in Metagrossite Urshifu, who gains plus 40 speed, 10 attack, and a general boost to both defenses. On top of a new ability in Tough Claws to replace Unseen Fists, this turns Urshifu into an incredible Swords Dance Sweeper, as well as a very good general wall breaker. On the other side of the spectrum, a defensive example of the tier niche on display can be seen in Slowbro Knight Blissey, who basically flat counters our Shifu Rapid Strike as alongside the Slowbro Knight, and gains an astounding 70 more defense, in the ability Shell Armor blocking it from any crits from surging strikes. Both of these use cases represent a trade-off for using the stone though. Urshifu can no longer hit through Protect or Burning Bulwarks due to the loss of Unseen Fist, though the latter matters less with Gouging Fire being banned, and Blissey struggles with being a long-term wall as it loses Natural Cure, meaning Toxic can become a very effective answer to counter Calm Mind Blissey, or just generally put it on a timer. But recently within the tier, the Red Orb, the item typically exclusive to Primal Groudon, has come under fire for being too overpowered, and after a long suspect test, was banned from the tier in its entirety after being present throughout the tier's entire lifespan of Scarlet and Violet. So today, we'll be covering what provokes this and what kept it around so long within the tier if it was so undivisibly overpowered. The Red Orb is the, at least in Mix and Mega, special boosting partner of the Red and Blue Orb duo, with Red Orb providing Groudon typically with the Fire Typing, the Desolate Land ability, and plus 50 Special Attack, 30 Attack, and a small 20 bonus to Defense. Within Standard Play, this was done to avoid giving Groudon an insane base 200 attack stat. But within Mix and Mega, that plus 50 can be far more appropriately used on an actual special attacker, allowing for its boost to be much more appreciated than what it would be typically. The best pairing for the Red Orb was most commonly special attackers that carried a strong stab option, access to Weather Ball, and at least an above average speed tier to make up for the lack of speed granted by the Red Orb. Due to this, the first found and banned abuser of the Red Orb within the tier was Jolteon, who carried a strong electric stab and thunderbolt, access to Weather Ball, and an incredible base 130 speed tier, all making up for its typically underwhelming base 110 special attack by boosting it to an astounding base 160, which is only 5 less than the comically broken Calyrex Shadow Rider. As such, it didn't take long for Jolteon to be banned in its entirety from the tier, but in its place, players quickly found another option in a very similar Electric-type Pokemon, Kilowattrel. Kilowattrel, while weaker and slower than Jolteon by only 5 in both speed and special attack, made up for this weakness by being an incredibly good blue and red orb user, especially with its access to fast endeavors with Volt Switch for guaranteed kills on Fattermon's mental wallet. Kilowattrel is a very unpredictable Pokemon, mostly due to its ease of use in running blue or red orb and getting incredible benefits for either one. Blue Orb granted it 100% accurate Hurricanes and Thunders, as well as Water Weather Balls, while Red Orb made Kilowattrel even stronger than the Blue Orb, with the drawback of forcing it to use Thunderbolt rather than Thunder, but helping further boost its power with Stab on its Fire Weather Balls, as unlike the Blue Orb, the Red Orb grants the user of it a Fire Typing. After Kilowattrel's ban, three more core users were discovered as great utilizers of the Red Orb, yet none of them were determined specifically as being too good of abusers of the item. Instead, players started looking in the direction of the Red Orb itself as the problem. The three core abusers discovered during this time all varied a bit in usage and how they fit on a team, consisting of Landers Incarnate, Lugia, and Azelf and they all shared very similar benefits, with slightly different use cases. Landers Incarnate was considered the best one used for coverage, with access to fire weather balls to break through common walls like Sable Knight Corviknight, as well as Earth Power to break through the common Eternatus, who could use its dragon typing to resist through weather ball, land a toxic, and begin to stall out the red orb user. Landers had a very coveted stab combo, and on top of this, due to Desolate Land blocking water attacks, it didn't even have to worry about being killed by a four times effective water attack from even faster threats like Metagrossite Samurott. But being able to hit Eternatus is easily the most important aspect of this, as most Red Orb users didn't like swapping to stop toxic damage, as due to their newfound fire typing, Stealth Rocks became a very detrimental aspect of a match to them, and so many either wouldn't swap much, or would simply use Calm Mind or any other setup move to set up and attempt to make a full sweep themselves. On top of this, Eternatus wasn't forced to bank on tanking anything. Due to its already incredible speed, it was capable of investing just enough speed to outrun Landorus, land a Toxic, and then faint to the incoming Earth Power. 
But while this sounds nice, as it can mean a guaranteed way to drop a very powerful threat with Toxic, it also means that for the price of only getting their Red Orb user for a few more turns, they get to clear out one of the most important walls in the metagame from your side, as Eternatus is great for walling a lot more than just red and blue orb users within the tier. This is because Eternatus is also a very large counter, or at least annoying wall for many pixelate users, due to pressure taking 2 PP from extreme speeds only 8 base uses, and with some defensive investment making Eternatus tough to break through for many of these mons, many teams relied on Eternatus to hold off pixelate mons, and so losing your pixelate counter to an early game red orb user could entirely wrap up a match and lead to an Altarianite Dragonite or Regilecki absolutely melting through your team. On top of this, getting Eternatus on the field could be a struggle in of itself, as it would typically struggle to tank two moves from Landers, especially if the Eternatus user fears an Earth Power read. So getting Eternatus out would typically mean having to sack at least one Pokemon, then bringing in Eternatus, toxicing the Landers, and then getting your Eternatus sacked as well. Meaning just because the Landers was able to get on the field, it got to take out two Pokemon, and all you were able to do was simply place it on a timer. Our second Red Orb user, Lugia, was less focused on coverage than Landers, and was instead focused on longevity and setting up with Calm Mind and Substitute to hide away from Eternatus. Lugia did have flaws though. Comparatively to the other special attackers within the tier that abused Red Orb, Lugia didn't really feel like it hit nearly as hard as the others did, and that's because it didn't. With only a base 90 special attack, it only climbed itself up to an astounding 140 special attack. Before this trade-off, Lugia had far, far better bulk than both Azelf and Landers, being able to tank super effective hits left and right, and with Recover and Calm Mind, easily set up and begin a full sweep. But this isn't to say it didn't have weaknesses. Lugia's core weakness within the tier was within its poor typing. With its Flying type being replaced with a Fire typing, it was left with a Fire and Psychic type combo, which while it hits great offensively, checking Eternatus with Psychic Noise and Corviknight with Fire Weather Balls, it was awful defensively, leaving Lugia weak to the ever-present dark and ground-type attacks within the tier. Despite this, Lugia had a very large argument for being one of the best abusers near the end of the Red Orb's life, as its incredible bulk helped it surpass its type issues, and its 140 special attack assisted in clearing out almost any threat, especially with Psychic Noise to help prevent it from being stalled out. Our last and final Red Orb user is Azelf, who is by far the riskiest option of the three present sharing the awful Fire Psychic typing that Lugia had, except with zero defense to support it, and only having Fire coverage and a notoriously inaccurate Fire Blast. Azelf was a riskier pick, but was great on very offensive teams, as with Nasty Plot it could set up and make a very quick sweep with its incredible base 115 speed tier, an incredible base 125 special attack. So with all these powerful threats covered, including how they ravage the tier, how come the Red Orb stuck around for so long? Well, it's for a few reasons, but the core part was that a large part of the player base believed it kept a lot of destructive forces in check, such as Sable Knight Lugia, who is notoriously hard to break through, or the common Altarianite users of the tier who could use their fairy extreme speed to make easy work of teams lacking a good steel or fire type Pokemon. But yet, it was still banned, and the reason for it was mostly because these things just weren't really all that true. While Red Orb users did help block off extremely tanky walls like Lugia from setting up, there were far better ways to do it in a healthy fashion for the metagame than the Red Orb, and the argument for them countering Altarianite users falls apart when looked at for too long, as the second most common Altarianite user, Dragonite, typically packs Extreme Speed, Dragon Dance, Roost, and Earthquake, almost exclusively to break through Red Orb users, as well as tanky steel types such as non laddie Stone Heat Rants. And that's all I really have for today. Last week within the tier, we also had Solgaleo get banned, which is an interesting development after Red Orb's ban. And if you'd all like a video on that, then let me know down below. And thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to participate in discussions surrounding these other metagames, I'll have the official other metagame Discord server linked in the description below. And I hope to see you all next time.